surprisingly, there's still a lot of work to be done understanding the eye muscles and the tissues surrounding them. Uh, we, there's anatomic evidence for some of the things I mentioned before, but I think we need to understand the physics of these tissues better and the physiology of them better. We still really don't understand how we get from those two-dimensional signals in the cortex to the three-dimensional coordinates we have down in the brainstem. In one clue might be the cerebellum, that's the, the literally the little brain, which is at the back of the head here. Uh, damage to the cerebellum can cause degradation of listings law. It may be that it's involved in sort of the, the corrective mechanisms to keep torsion in uh, listings plane or the torsion that's out of the saccades and the head free. Uh, more work is needed to be done there. Uh, I think a third area is that, of course, a lot of this work is done in impoverished conditions in the laboratory where people are just looking at uh, lights in the dark. And what happens when you get into more natural situations where you're you know, manipulating objects as we do in the real world and you're using your head in more flexible ways? And, and naturally, we, we, we we have may have those default mechanisms I've talked about, but I can violate my my head torsion at will, and so can you. So there's these other control mechanisms in the brain that we don't really know that much about. 